Hello, my wonderful, beautiful friends. Guys, welcome back to our slash Entitled People, where people truly believe that they're the center of the universe. And in this episode, guys, holy moly, you guys are going to be baffled at the entitlement of these people. We've got Karens demanding money from strangers, breaking out in busy cafes, destroying medical devices. It is absolutely wild. I hope you enjoy the stories. Don't shake your heads too hard. And as always, you can send or link your post to this email right Right here, let's dive in. So this happened when I was out of town about a week ago. I was sitting in a popular cafe doing some work, and it's a typical first come, first served, no reservations cafe that was pretty much always full. Today was no different, but I got by with headphones and the knowledge that no one was going to take me off my precious seat. I was taking a break, sipping on my coffee, looking around me to people watch, when suddenly a 50-something-year-old woman walks in with her husband into the crowded cafe. The woman looked around with an extremely disappointed look on her face, before muttering something angry to her husband, her husband nodding along with all of it. The woman suddenly steps to the middle of the cafe with her husband in tow, and she clears her throat. Suddenly, she launches into this tangent how she wanted to sit down, and how we were somehow selfish for taking seats for ourselves and overstaying, instead of leaving after a set time frame to let other people take seats. Now, if that wasn't entitled enough, listen to this. Next, she said, Come on then, someone's gotta get up so me and my husband can sit in here. She then points to two men who are sitting at a table and she screams, You two, show everyone in the cafe how much of a gentleman you are by offering my husband and I your seat. Of course, they didn't, and no one felt obliged to do so, after being ranted at self-righteously. So the woman fumed some more, and she and her husband began walking table to table, giving everyone angry stares and occasionally making passive-aggressive comments. When she came up to me, I just focused on my computer with my headphones in, and she told me that I was impolite for not even looking at her. I didn't reply, I just wanted her to leave. Eventually, one of the workers came up to her and said that she would have to go if she wasn't going to order anything and she was disturbing the other customers. After a long back and forth between the two of them, in which the woman made some lovely comments about the worker's choice of career, how poor she probably is, and how she'll never amount to anything, the woman then left in a huff, with her husband furiously following behind her, and she flipped us all the bird as she left. One of the customers near me said it best, Thank F, that's over. Holy, the audacity of that Karen, right? Show the cafe how much of a gentleman you are by giving us your seat. Like that to me is super duper cringe. And I only wish the two men just stood up and then shouted back at her, no. And you really have to think, like if she did this at this particular cafe, how many other times has she done this? And has it ever worked? I mean, it must have at least worked once, right? For her to think that just saying that magical sentence will automatically make free seats appear. Some people just think they're too special, right? And if you think what that woman said was ridiculous, listen to this next post. So I was recently at the grocery store shopping for my weekly food haul for my family. I brought with me three reusable shopping bags, but ended up needing just one. And while I can't say that I have an emotional attachment to these bags, I do like them very much. I bought them because I love the design, the color, and the print on them. And it saves me from having to purchase bags from the store. They're nice, practical, and I like them. I finished loading my stuff on the conveyor belt at the cash register, and then put the separator so the person behind me can start with their haul. I then put my three bags on top of my stuff because I had them in the shopping cart. While I'm busy fishing out my wallet from my purse, I catch a flash of color in my periphery. I look up, and I see the woman behind me has reached over, and she's taken two of my bags. Confused, I stutter, uh, excuse me, those are not store bags, those are my own property, please give them back to me. The Karen says, I know these are not the store ones. I'm not an idiot. Which prompts me to ask her, then why are you taking my property? Karen just looks at me and she says, it looks like you don't need all of them. Your groceries will fit nicely into one. I need these. So mind your own business and stop making a scene. When I heard her say that, I'm confused and I'm getting irritated. I'm making a scene for confronting her politely about taking my stuff. But before I can even react, the older gentleman who was a customer before me, as well as the cashier, speak up. The cashier says, excuse me, those bags are hers, and Karen interrupts her and says, I just need two bags. Why are you acting like I'm kicking puppies? 
That's when the gentleman says, Why are you getting mad? You take this girl's property and you tell her she doesn't need it, and you act like nobody should stop you? If you need bags, buy them for yourself. The woman then starts huffing and puffing, and she says, Now wait just a minute. Why are you all making such a scene? It's only two bags. At this point, the cashier basically yells at her and says, Ma'am, give her back her bags now. I'm not negotiating with you. Security is standing right by those doors, and taking property of others is stealing, no matter how you try to reason it. The cashier then picks up her mic, and she calls security to the register, and then she looks at Karen sternly. Cashier then says, What will it be? Karen gives me back my bags while she's mumbling something, saying, It's just a few worthless bags. I thank the cashier and the old man who spoke up, and then go on my merry way. I didn't do much, but stand my ground. But the cashier and the old man were the MVPs. It did warm my heart that people saw something nasty, and they immediately jumped in to correct the foul behavior. Guys, I too am glad OP had backup, because otherwise, I think that lady would have put up a fight that would have escalated into something even bigger. And the fact that she thought stealing was okay because it was just two measly bags is the problem here, guys. Like, she really thought it would be okay to do that, and then act like she was wronged, and that people should have just minded their own business when she was caught. And this person comments, So a crazy lady yelled at me at the store for doing the opposite. I had some plastic bags with me that I got for free from another grocery store, and I gave one to a woman who didn't have one with her. Well, some other woman in line apparently did not like this because she said, Why are you giving her those? She should bring her own. I think she expected me to start yelling back, but I just looked at her like she was crazy, and she shut right up. Why she cared at all is a mystery to me. So reading all these stories, I've learned that people do get angry, and they'll poke their nose into things that are none of their business when they feel self-righteous enough. So that's probably why she cared. So here's some background. I own a 32-unit facility kind of like an apartment-style complex, that houses felons who have finished their sentences, and they need some help returning to society. Each unit houses two clients. We do stuff like teach them computer skills, help them learn to cook, build a resume, stuff like that. This happened around 6am. My night manager calls me and tells me that there's a lady pounding on the front door, insisting that she needs to talk to whoever's in charge. So I tell him to give her my phone number. Before I'm even off the phone with him, she's calling me. And before I can even introduce myself, she's losing it. The woman goes off, accusing me of kidnapping her son and forcing him to work for me. And I do want to note that he doesn't work for me. He works at a recycling center. The man is 34 years old, and he's here 100% on his own free will. Then she goes into how, as his mother, she needs to see what kind of living conditions he's living in. But he refuses to let her visit. According to her, he would never refuse to see her, unless he was under duress. So what she needs, and what she demands that I do, is to come to the facility and unlock his door so she can go inside and look around. I told her that's not gonna happen. I'm not letting her into someone else's home. She's not a resident here, and her son's not the only person who lives in that space. And I would need permission from both her son and his roommate to let her inside. She has no right to be here. I then told her to please get off our property or we'll have you trespassed. This caused her to shriek, how dare you, into the phone, and tell me that if she isn't let into the room within 10 minutes, she was going to call the police and have me charged with kidnapping. I tell her to go ahead and then hang up. Now, I wasn't at the facility, but from the security cam footage, it appears that when the cops showed up and she explained the situation to them, her son came to the front door. He told the cops that he didn't want to see her and that we didn't kidnap him. She then went into a rage, attacked her son, trying to grab him by the throat. But he didn't get hurt, he just backed up and slammed the door. The cops took her away. I don't know what's gonna happen with her, but seeing that dude's mom, he didn't have a great start in life. Yep, sounds to me like a wonderful lady, guys, attacking her own son in front of cops like that. I'm just glad to know that that man is cutting his mom out of his life. Good on him. Obi did come into the comments to say, We found him a nice little job for $22 an hour and benefits, and now he's saving for a place of his own. Should be fully discharged from the program by June, maybe July if he needs a little more time. Balls in his court at this point. 
So this was about 13 to 15 years ago, and I was working in a convenience store in my town. I was 22 years old. I can tell you a fair share of stories from this job, like the time the owner got mad at me and he called me a dumb idiot. All because I didn't let two hot girls go at it in the store. And I don't mean fight, go at it. Anyways, there was this one girl who always came in, and she was not nice in any way. Between her attitude and how she dressed, she was like 23 to 25, and she acted 15. And she always came in dirty. Not smelly dirty, but not showered in days greasy dirty. Not including the fact that drugs have had their toll on her body. I won't go into detail because I feel bad enough with how I described her already. Anyways, I always had a problem with her because she would always open her mouth about anything. Just to give me attitude and try to distract me from seeing her friend steal. That never worked. So one day, she comes in and she doesn't say anything. I was talking with a customer and asking how things were with his wife and their newborn. This girl interjects herself into the conversation, and she was like, I never knew you were such a nice guy. Why does everyone I know hate you? At that, I just look at her and say, it's hard to be liked when I don't let you steal from my store. So before she leaves, she says, you know, now that I've had a chance to talk with you, I kind of like you. She then hands me a piece of paper with her number, and she said, call me. I did not. I was not interested in any way. So about three to four months later, I go to my work to get a drink, and the owner calls me into his office. He then proceeds to ask me if I need a lawyer. Being freaked out, I asked, what for? He then tells me that a customer is going around asking everyone where I live because she had to get my address for legal reasons. He then drops on me what the legal reasons were. That she was going after me for child support. I was like, what the heck? My boss and I are on really good terms, and he asked me why the F would I even sleep with her. I told him I never even called her after she gave me her number. After the conversation, I walk out from behind the counter to get the drink I was going after in the first place. And guess who walks in, just as I'm about to go around the counter? The girl comes in, and she yells out, There you effing are, I need your address. And I told her it wasn't happening. She then proceeds to yell out loud, I'm pregnant and you need to pay child support. This guy ain't paying me money for my child. At this point, I'm annoyed already and this is not helping. I told her, no I don't and no I won't. She then yelled, I have five kids and this is six. So I know how this works. Give me your address. I'm just shocked at the fact that she's got five kids, and with how often she's in the store, she doesn't have a single one living with her. I then proceed to tell her that this kid's not my responsibility. Of course, picture yourself in my shoes. Now people are looking at me like I'm a dirtbag who's refusing to take care of his child, and I'm getting angrier by the second. The next part is where people start realizing that she's the bad guy. The girl then proceeds to lie, and she yells in front of everyone, You never called me back to go out with you, and I ended up going out with my ex, and he got me pregnant. This is all your fault, so you're gonna pay for this kid. Hearing her say that, every single person is now looking at her with a what the F look. I do everything in my power not to smile at the fact that she just shot herself in the foot with a store full of people with that stupid comment. I looked at her straight in the eyes, and I told her, that's not how this works. The only person liable for the kid is the one who got you pregnant, and that you don't have a case. And even if it made it to court, it would be thrown out. So she got pissed. She stormed out. And for the next two to three months, when I was there, she made it a point to strut in and say where they were at setting up the case. And then she stopped showing up altogether. Needless to say, 13 to 15 years later, I'm still waiting for the summons. (laughs) Guys, the fact that she thought that this was going to work, like, I'm baffled. I I don't even know what to say about that. And this post reminds me of a post I read a while back where someone thought they could sue a babysitter for child support. Like, the guy watched a Karen's five-year-old son once, one time, guys. And she was basically trying to sue him because, in her words, if you take on the fatherly role even once, the kid becomes yours. Ain't that something. Guys, I'm just glad she said what she did when she did because it wasn't looking good for OP. This happened when I was in middle school, back in the days of wired headphones. I'm a 24-year-old male, and I've been a type 1 diabetic since about 5 years old, and I use a continuous glucose monitor and an insulin pump. In school, I had an individualized education program, 
so all my teachers were told about it and that I would need my insulin pump in class, that it might make noise and I might have to pull it out of my pocket to mess with it if I needed insulin, or I might need to drink a little juice pouch. I was able to do so at my discretion. Well, with that said, we had this one teacher who was a complete hard ass for no reason. The woman was notorious for making kids cry, and she even told one girl who wanted to be a doctor to find a cure for cancer that she would need to actually be smart to do that, while chuckling to herself. Let a kid dream, man. We were 12 years old. So as you can imagine, she was also at war with technology. But anyway, if you're not familiar with insulin pumps, the kind I use has a little tube that connects the pump, which has the insulin, to my body, which needs the insulin. The teacher also liked to be weirdly obtuse about things. So instead of being like other teachers and simply saying something like, no cell phones in class, put it on my desk, which would allow me to remind them that it's an insulin pump, this teacher would instead try to talk all abstract about what she wanted to happen while walking around the room. So on this particular day, she kept alluding to students listening to music in class, that you should be careful what you do because she can see it, that us kids think we're so sneaky but we can't fool her as she knows what we're up to. I obviously wasn't listening to music, so I figured she'd seen someone with headphones in the room. And the next thing I know, she snuck up behind me with scissors and she cut the tube to my pump. At the time, I was facing the front of the room to look at the projector screen to take notes, and she crept up behind me from the back of the room and she reached her arm down with scissors. I thought she was just walking behind me, just making her way around the classroom. It took me a good moment to realize what exactly happened because I was astonished. I was used to teachers thinking I had a cell phone, but no one had ever touched it before, much less cut my life-sustaining tube. I was actually sitting with my mouth agape, and she turns to me, and she says, Mr. Wonderly, care to share what tunes are more important than listening to a teacher during class? At this point, I had put together that she thought I was listening to music, and she thought she cut my headphone wires. So I respond with, uh, just the sound of my thoughts while I've got any, since that was my insulin pump you just cut. Long story short, she let me go to my locker to get my cell phone, to call my mom to bring me a new infusion set. Then, I just waited at the front office for her as she worked from home and she drove like a bat out of hell. She was so angry and I don't ever want to see her that angry again in my life. It took 10 years off me and I wasn't even in trouble. The teacher of course had apologies to me and all the teachers got some more disability accommodation training or something. In terms of her apology, it wasn't too bad. We had a meeting with her, the principal, the assistant principal, and a lady from the special education office, plus me and my parents. The teacher said she was so sorry for her actions and that she shouldn't have treated me that way, and she hopes I don't grow up to expect people to act like that towards me. She said she forgot I had a pump, and she was saying that she should have been more mindful and that it was her fault, and that I did nothing wrong. She also said that I was very brave and calm in the face of adversity. Stuff like that. She then apologized to my mom and dad for frightening them, and for any cost, she offered to pay for it, but my parents declined. No, my parents didn't sue her or the school, and no, she was not fired, and yes, I still had to be in her class. Guys, I'm surprised OP's parents did not go scorched earth on that teacher or the school, and that OP was so calm throughout all that. Like, all I can say is if I were a middle school student and I had a nasty, nasty teacher like that, oh boy, let the games begin, right? Like, no amount of apologies would have been enough. And guys, let's just say that OP was listening to music in class. There should never be any reason for a teacher to destroy students' personal property like that. Like, cutting a student's headphone cable should never even cross a teacher's mind of things to do. But with that said, guys, reading this post, I'm like, how in the world did a teacher mistake a tube for earbuds or headphone wires? Like, she has to be dumb, right? And then I googled. Excuse my ignorance, guys, what an insulin pump setup looks like, and holy, let me tell you, this can easily be mistaken as a headphone cable running under your shirt or sweater. So yeah, I can kind of see why she thought it was headphone cables. But let me know your thoughts on this. How many of you would have reacted much differently than OP's parents? Like a lot of people in the comments are saying that the teacher should have been fired on the spot, have her teaching license revoked, and some people are even saying that they would have sued the school and saying she should have gone to jail for destroying someone's medical device as that's considered assault. Leave your comments down below. 
So I'll start by explaining some backstory. I'm a 54-year-old male, and I lost my first wife when my son and daughter were ages 9 and 12. My son is now 25, and my daughter's 22. Both of my kids took it hard, as you would expect, and to this day, we have a poor relationship. My current wife is Doreen, 49 years old, and my stepdaughter Amy is 18. I started dating Doreen four months after my first wife passed. And as such, my kids believe I cheated on their mom because I moved on so fast. Amy was 5 when we got together, and as such, I see her as my own daughter. So on to the actual story. Four years ago, two days before my daughter Kay's high school graduation, Amy got very ill while visiting grandparents and ended up needing emergency surgery. My wife and I rushed to be with Amy, and admittedly, I did not communicate well with Kay. At the time, Kay didn't pick up my calls, so I left her a voicemail and several text messages explaining what happened, telling Kay that I was sorry, but I would make it up to her. A few hours go by, and I get a call from Kay, and she's in hysterics, telling me what a terrible father I am, and stated if I did not attend her graduation, I would be dead to her. I chose to support Amy. True to her words, Kay did not contact me on the day of her graduation. And when I came home, Kay's things had been moved out of the house, with a note explaining that we were no longer family and to never contact her again. Luckily, Kay and I were able to reconcile. However, I promised her that I would give her absolutely anything in the world to make her forgive me. She said that she would forgive me as long as I refused to attend Amy's graduation, as this was the only way to make it fair. Now I thought that was a bit entitled of her to ask, considering the circumstances are different. But I agreed at the time, thinking she was joking and angry and she would soon forget. This leads me to now. Graduation's coming up. And invitations for Amy's graduation went out, and despite all the hostility, Amy wanted to make sure Kay got one. So with that, Kay called Amy later that day, and said she would be unable to attend as she and I would be spending the day together, per the agreement. At that, Amy broke down into tears, asking me why I was missing her graduation. I assured her I was not, and that I would speak to Kay. Later, I explained to Kay that I simply could not miss Amy's graduation. Kay launches into a tirade how I was such a liar and an a-hole, and how could I do this to her again? I told her that we would talk when she calmed down, and she said we would never talk again. My son and several extended family members have all taken Kay's side saying I didn't see how hurt she was at graduation. My wife says I'm an a-hole for even promising that in the first place, and that I should have known that it would only upset one or both girls. Amy's just sad and confused, wondering why Kay hates her. I know keeping my promise and not attending Amy's graduation is probably the only way to salvage my relationship with Kay. But at the time, I did not believe Kay when she said she wanted me to miss Amy's graduation, as it seemed like such a ridiculous request. So am I the a-hole? Oh boy guys, so everyone and their dogs are saying that OP is the biggest a-hole in all of this. Like, why promise someone something when you know you're not going to keep it? And the fact that Dad only promised Kay to essentially shut her up and make her happy is such an a-hole move. Like, way to go, Dad. You're sucky on both sides now. And people are really letting Opie have it, guys. This person says, you are the a-hole. You replaced your kid's mom with a new family four months after she died. Your kids lost their mom so young, and you don't seem like you prioritized their feelings or help them deal with things. Instead, you moved on fast. Kay didn't have a mother to attend her graduation, and she needed you there. Could you not have driven to the grad and then back to the hospital? And the top comment of the post says, You are the a-hole, and you've been for years. You're a bad father. Kay's correct. You're a liar. You've done nothing to prioritize Kay ever since your new family rolled in. Your relationship with your daughter's dead, and the blood is on your hands. Guys, let me know your thoughts on this. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash entitled people. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed the last episode on the channel, it's in our slash I don't work here, lady, where a Karen throws a huge tantrum when she doesn't get served. Go check it out if you haven't, and myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.